Well, hello, everybody. When I was in high school, my favorite band was X from Los Angeles. And they did a, a live album near the end there. Well, they're back now, but they had disappeared for a while. Whoops. Give me a face ID. All right. Coming into focus. Hello. And that's how the album started. Hello, everybody. Was this going to focus? There we go. All right, take a look. I cleaned it up a little bit. We're still in this is like, we're still calling this the pencil stage. We haven't hit the, uh, the ink stage. One thing you may have noticed is I took the um, panel borders, the margin borders anyways out. And then everything else is like an inset panel. Although, I think I only like this middle one as an inset panel. <laughs> what am I gonna do with these three down here? Um, I'm I'm tempted to take them out and put them on the next page. You know, what would that be all about? In fact, actually, let's let's do let's do this. We'll uh, we'll take this and uh, yeah, we're all right. Um, there's literally no panel layer, panel border layer on there anymore. There's just um, just the drawing layer. So I think what we're going to do is um, copy the canvas and put it on. Let's put the whole thing on this one. So we just, you know, so we have a good copy. And then for this one, we're going to take it. We're going to take this stuff off. My problem with that, oops, give me a rectangle. The problem with that is, well, if this comes off, let's say we cut it. Um, what do we put? The, what do we put down here? <laughs> what are we doing there? Um, got a couple of options. One option is we could. Um, Grab our existing panel, pull it down a little bit, and maybe down to there, and then we could just kind of fit more in. Why is it so dark? Oh, I got a problem. Well, it's not really a problem. The problem is I'm gonna have to lighten it up a little bit. And we'll, we'll have to show more depth. In the um, in the field, actually, this does feel okay. I think actually this might be the way to go. And we can show like a hand, a big hand. What's the first rule of perspective? First rule of perspective is if it's closer, it's bigger. <laughs> For everyone who's telling you a million rules of perspective, just remember the first one. Remember the first one and you, sh you should be okay. Um, I've screwed up already. How about this? Let's take this. Cut and paste. It's on its own layer now, okay? So if it's on its own layer, we can draw right through it. Am I on the right layer? I'm on the wrong layer. We can't draw on the right through it unless we're on the right layer. <laughs> Alright, now we can. Alright, here we go. And you can't even see. I might actually even take it off. Let's say let's let's say we take it off for a second. I mean let's take this one off. How do we get to there? Cause I like I like the where the head is placed, so let's let's change where the shoulder is placed. 
By the way, what do you think? What do you think so far? Right? It looked like a mess yesterday, didn't it? <laughs> it always looks like a mess. I'm not saying I'm not a messy guy. I am. I'm going to be rocking some more Trove later on tonight. Looking forward to that. I figured out, I would read the wiki a little bit, and I figured out a way you can change the look of your gear, which I didn't know you could do. You can you can also unlock all the everything that you pay money for just about on that game. I pay, I'm not paying any money for it, or at least I haven't. Um, you can probably unlock for free. That's another kind of cool thing. I just I didn't know you could, because um, I have access to the free stuff, obviously. I'm not fundamentally opposed to paying money for a game. That's how video games used to work. Put a quarter in. Then they made it so you had to put two quarters in. Some video games you had to put four quarters in. That was some bullshit right there. Alright. Who wants to do that? Um, I'm not sure I'm getting a good, <laughs> good read on this forearm here. I think I'm doing okay with certain things. This one's going to be a fist, so it's different. You can see I, I like to uh, make a model. I don't know if you roll his fist up like that. It looks a little bit effeminate. Let's just let's move it down. We got all this room now. We didn't have this room before. stress too much if you see it's starting to get rough again because like I said we're just gonna go in we're just gonna go in and fix it up all right that didn't seem to work but we can do this how about from there literally a dude right outside my window with like a leaf blower. <laughs> Hang on, I should ask. Did you pay for leaf blowing on the porch? They came back to do it better. Okay, just checking. Make him blow the leaves off the porch. That'll teach him. Oh, did you like report them or something? No. Oh, they noticed it themselves. <laughs> Alright, fair enough, fair enough. Um, this is not a great hand here. Let's, um, let's see what we can do. Just gonna outline some knuckles. One of the tricks is if you have a hand and an arm, I'm wondering if I can just move this arm a little bit. Whoops. Maybe 
carpet a little bit. Alright, it could probably be redrawn a bit. I do like the angle of this face, and I like this nose. I just want to put another hand, another arm, another hand right here, right? Maybe? Something like that. The tough part with a zombie arm or a zombie hand is it's it's not just a hand. You have to show the um you know if this was a more intelligent combatant, we would show that in the you know in the in the pose of the hand. The zombie's just as likely to have a uh, whoops. an open hand as it is to have a closed hand. something with thumb out kind of like in this pose thumb out and then on this right hand On this right hand, maybe like a. This is a good monster grip, right? Monster should have tension. And uh, the grip itself looks monstrous. So, <laughs> shout out to Michael Hing. He actually gave me a uh, suggestion. He's like, here's an idea I had. And uh, here's the uh, suggestion. Hang on one sec. Um, he's like, just having down here, just knocking somebody out. I'm like, no, no, no. He's losing. <laughs> so it's, shout out to Michael Hink for helping me out, though. Um, that's one of the cool things about the Discord is you can always get some help. I, I put it out there and I said, what do I do with this? Because this is this panel is not great. It's troubled. I want to do this. I want to do like a. I think this is almost like a that a box triangle like something like that my problem is okay is it in the right place you gotta have hands though it's one thing that's always gonna be true about your comics is you gotta if you can't draw hands now you better learn <laughs> Because they're going to come up. And all the things that, that go with them, they're going to come up. Right? Um, and then, let's bring back that inset panel. Whoops. Hey, now. I'm gonna bring this down just a little bit. How about right there? So we can see both hands. 
you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do it like this. Hold on. Let's do it down here. How about something like this? seems to work right there actually. Okay. Some zombie zombie claws. And then also Let's go back to, um, let's drop in a panel. I'm going to put it up above. We're going to call that panels. And there's only one panel, but we're going to have to throw it on top of everything so that it superimposes. I have a feeling I'm going to have to do it. You know what? Let's make it a slightly heavier line weight. I draw these when I draw these they're in a um, a uh, technical pen brush is what I use which has a single line weight but when I ink it I use I, I like to use brushes that are asymmetrical one of my favorite is the Gesinki ink one and that allows you to do um, much more expressive lines. So when you're when you're doing your inking, you can whoops, you can you can bring in some real expression. Also, all these guys, all these zombies down here, but previously they were just kind of having their um, legs kind of cut off by the bottom of the page. So we didn't really get to see the depth. But as long as we're extending, this bottom line, there's a tree. We have the opportunity to do all kinds of cool things. I'm afraid his crowbar will look like a cane no matter what I do, so I'm just that's fine. All right, now I yesterday I tried to record a um, a section about. Where do you post your comic? And I actually was going online and trying to show people how to, you know, where are some good places to put it. Um, and because of the way I set up my screen capture, I got this weird green flicker. <laughs> it's like, I screwed it up. Um, long story short. But I'll just tell you, I think there you have a lot of options. Um, and the one that I would use now if it were me is the comic series or comic fury or your own website and comic the comic fury or the comic series.com which gives you your own website it'll be the name of your comic the comic series um, is I feel like it's your best bet plus it integrates with patreon so I know that um, um, Sideburns is using it for Duckling Star, and I would just say, hey, go check, definitely check out Duckling Star. First of all, you should check out Duckling Star regardless. And then, yeah, there we go. This is looking pretty good. I haven't started on this this inset panel yet, but what do you think of this guy?
I've got some room down here, but I could kind of fill it in with texture, plants, rocks, There's a lot of cactus around. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now let's look at this inset panel. Here's the inset panel. Um, the piece that I cut out, whoops, let's go back to the inset panel. Piece that I cut out was, um, oh, I gotta reduce the opacity a little bit. Actually, you know what I have to do? I think what we're going to do is this. Opacity all the way up. Opacity here, all the way up. Fold them back together. Bring it back down. <laughs> Let's do it that way. All right. It shows him getting his crowbar back and then using it to get back to his feet. Like he's going to be able to fight these zombies off. And I had this vague notion, and I think I even mentioned in the stream that he was going to like impale one of the zombies with it, and I couldn't figure out a way to stage it. Um, and the reason for that is I was thinking in too uh, decompressed of a... Where is it compressed? Decompressed um, terms. I was saying this action has to follow this action with, you know, a really short time scale, but we're turning a whole page here. In fact, this is page nine, so this is going to be on the right side. Like, if you were to open the book, it'll be this this page, and you flip the page over, you'll get to ten, because the right hand side page is always the odd numbered one. So, um, There's a zombie kind of running in over here. You can see his legs. Another zombie head or foot over here. <laughs> There's a zombie in the back. It's just got to look like a total frenzy. Yeah, also, that was another recommend from Jacob Moore. Just make it wall-to-wall -wall zombies. <laughs> See, easier said than done, guys. Each figure has to be sort of accounted for and balanced along with the others. Let's have it this one. He's got a hand. The very first rabbit fighter I did, there's a, a battle where, and I didn't show it because I wasn't good enough of an artist to do it at the time, not that I'm that good right now, um, where he's overwhelmed by these monsters called the Scourge, and I'll show you a picture of some Scourge monsters real quick, because the Scourge are all throughout all of my comics. Um, that's a scourge right there. It's like a cube-shaped monster with one eye. And they have these tentacles, right? And they can also use, um, like a blast attack. <laughs> um, and they cross over, by the way, into every one of my comic universes. Let's see, there's another one. I have another one. I could show you. Well, hmm, but not that one. Anyways, oh, it's in this one definitely. There's a dead one right there. Scourge are a constant. 
And uh, I was gonna, I'm going to have to bring the Scorch back. Scorch has to hit return back to Rabbit Fighter as well. It's got to be another Rabbit Fighter cartoon with a Scorch attack in it. Actually, this is looking pretty good for me. There's the balance of the foot. You can feel the weight of it. The problem right now is I got these kind of that's meant to be a zombie back here, but there's nothing to him yet. And this is meant to be a zombie as well. It's an it's an overwhelming battle. And all told, I think I want to have at least 20 zombies. So I don't know if I've got 20 in this battle, but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's about 10 here. And this one implies 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, about the same 10. I, I have this idea, and I don't have it. I don't have a good scene for it yet, but I want to do a thing where we pull out to overhead, like an overhead shot. And you can see like a rabbit fighter in the middle and he's swinging, you know, his weapon around. By this time he's hopefully he's going to have his sword back. And you can see he's going to be surrounded by 20 zombies. <laughs> like like in a circle. They're going to be like circling him and it'll it'll be a a cool um composition if I can pull it off right. This is a zombie over here. Which pencil am I using? Oh, stupid. I meant to be using technical pen. Yeah, I stick to technical pen on the drawing because otherwise you can go a little bit too wide with the. Um... Why is it so dark? Oh, it just is. It's the same darkness as everything else. because it's tiny, dude. What was I thinking? They all at least have loincloths. Some of them will have kind of raggedy strips of clothing. Oops. That was not meant to be. This guy's got an arm lock. They're also not meant to be particularly buff, but for whatever reason when I'm drawing the pure like body forms of some of these characters they end up kind of looking 
pretty tough. That hand is a little bit too claw-like. Oops. It's meant to be. Like he's grabbing on. Maybe it's ripped his uh, poncho. Like on uh, Herobot Zero, I would show Herobot Zero getting his, his helmet broken. And Rabbit Fighter doesn't have that. <laughs> He's got no helmet. Um, but it always looks tougher, you know, when you get him kind of beat up a little bit. It look tough. Rabbit Fighter has no origin and no backstory, other than the fact that he is a, a refugee looking for a fabled, a fabled place called Sanctuary. But I think over time we may even re we may even reveal all kinds of information about him. Let's have this be a dead, a dead zombie. How do we show a dead zombie? They already look dead. We gotta show like not even a hint of movement, no muscle. Um, tensing in the body at all. And kind of helps. There we go. This hand will be out, and then this hand will be back. Let's do another. Zombie, dead zombie. We just have a hand, you know, just got sticking out somewhere. foot of a zombie that's still on his feet. He's trying to jump into the dog pile to attack. Maybe even have him reaching down this way. Um, oh, okay. When you're reaching out with your <laughs> with your that side hand, thumbs are on the inside. All right, there we go. Have we gone far enough? This zombie doesn't have a start yet. What that? 
is really leaning forward. This hand belongs to this guy, so that means it's his left hand. So his thumb is actually on this side. Unless I screwed that up. Or maybe it's a hand belonging to another zombie. something right that looks like it's pretty dynamic okay that works pretty okay let's have another body over here just a body catcher okay here we go It's, a, it's it's slightly too big to be a head. We need to have some shoulders. You know, there's the foot. That works. Face down in the dirt. Does that look like it works, kind of, almost? I think it kind of works. Now, texturing these zombies, each one of these zombies has got their own, they all have this, uh, these radioactive lesions. <laughs> so every one of these, it's kind of what sets them apart. I think in color this would be a real nightmare because we would, I mean, we would easily be able to tell the zombies from any, everybody else, but it would just look like this big green blotch. I don't think it would um, look. I don't think it would look good. of unfortunate tangents in there that are nigh unfixable. Everything's got to be drawn to this hand reaching for the um, crowbar because the crowbar is going to be the salvation. Until he spots his sword in the junk pile. I wonders how it got there. This will be a zombie dead over here. It's like a head. <laughs> Maybe it's attached to that, that hand. I don't know. Who knows? Probably not because that. Angle is just too much. I don't think that angle would work. I 
Okay. Guess what? You know what? I think it works. All right. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Um, it's a good chance I'm gonna continue working on this, but I've already been doing this for 41 minutes. And let's take a look. Okay, here's the whole page. I'm gonna make it bigger so you can see it. So we have. Um, actually, let's bring the camera a little bit closer. Okay. You got um, as you go down the page, you can see rabbit fighter in the middle there, surrounded by zombies, and you can see in the extreme foreground we got these two guys on the left and the right. You can just barely see this guy over here to the right, and they're coming in, and then inset panel. He's been borne down to the ground, right? He's been knocked down to the ground, and he's reaching out for his. Uh, his uh, crowbar. It's a big metal crowbar and he's going to use that crowbar to on the next page he's going to basically fight his way to his feet. And maybe he kills one or two more zombies. right? And he's got to get a little bit more beat up. I'm going to have... they're going to be like biting him, tearing his clothes and you know one guy had his ear. <laughs> like if you look at this like 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 check that out, <laughs> like he's got him by the ear, um, he's lost his hat, um, etc. So this is this is a no kidding battle, and um, then he fights his way to his feet, um, and we're gonna have the rest of the battle, and then we're gonna cut back to Gallows, and actually I think we might just have him fight his way to his feet and kill like one or two zombies. And then we're going to cut back to Gallows because there's a whole other battle that has to take place. And then, you know, the kind of the one of the benefits of decompressed storytelling is we can kind of skip ahead. We can show him having already killed maybe, you know, maybe 12 out of 20 zombies <laughs> or something, you know, and just completely he's going to be covered in blood and gore, and he'll have, you know, he'll be all beaten up and torn up, but he's he's still going to be able to fight on. And my um, one of my inspirations for this is I don't know if you remember the contest of champions. I th was this contest of champions? It was with the um, the thing when the um, prize fighter from the other world, the prize fighter from another universe or whatever it is, comes down, and he's like, I want to fight the toughest superhero on earth. And so they had like um, you know everyone decide who is going to be the toughest and like. Like Hulk leaves immediately, even though he's probably the toughest. He just leaves. He just doesn't want to do it. And the same thing with Namor. Namor wants to leave as well. And by the way, his name is Namor, not Namor. Um, no matter no matter what they do in the movie, they're wrong. Um, and then uh, he leaves, and then I think a bunch of the others leave, and it just comes down to Ben Grimm, the thing, and he battles this guy and he pretty much loses but he battles him to a standstill and he's supposed to be almost dead but he just keeps on fighting and so the uh, champion says you know what you're pretty you're pretty valorous to continue fighting so I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go <laughs> and that was it for the contest of champions um, it was pretty cool it was a, it was a good comic it was really well written actually I don't even remember who wrote it, it might have been a Roy Thomas who knows Okay, I could probably redo that hand. This hand's got problems. Look how lumpy it is. That's a lumpy looking hand. Okay, like, follow, subscribe. Stay tuned for more gaming this weekend. If there's nothing going too crazy, we might start off Critical Vol, where we're going to talk about world building and look at the mythic GM emulator and uh, talk about how you can uh, use it to create stories that can then go right back into your comics which I think is a really cool use of such a thing boy that's an ugly line I don't like petted lines, I like poom I like Swoop, swoop. That's how it should look. All right. All right. Like, follow, subscribe, and I will see you later.